Welcome to Your Food Looks Funny. I am Marcus T, and today we're talking about transitioning away from meat. I'm not eating that. I'm not eating that. All right, we're back with another episode. Thank you guys for joining us again. I uh, just want to make sure I tell you to check out the social medias. YFLF podcast on Instagram is the best place to find us there. Check out the website, yourfoodlooksfunny.com. You can also donate to the show on there. Call the show or text us. We uh, we love to hear your input. 419-77-PICKY. That's 419-777-4259 if you want to reach out to us. Today, I have a special guest, my cousin Tammy, dedicated listener to the show dedicated listener. I appreciate it. She is here to talk about transitioning from eating meat and animal products to a plant-based diet. And this is something that I don't talk about that much, so it should be great to kind of get this out in the air. Tammy, how you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you. I'm doing very well. Great. Great. Thank very you. Well. Thank you for joining me this evening. Uh, people might be hearing it during the morning, but we record in the evening. So, uh, Tell me about where you're looking at getting started here with eliminating animal products. Okay. Well, um, I think it started uh, at the top of 2020. I decided to go on a keto diet. Um, and uh, it wasn't necessarily to lose a lot of weight, even though that ended up happening. It was basically for mental clarity, for balance. Um, had a lot of stress going on at that time and kind of, had done a little bit of research about keto and intermittent fasting. And so I blended the two. So um, I guess what, it, what happened then is that the benefits that I saw from eliminating sugar and carbs and, and, and things that broke down the sugar in my diet, mental clarity, better sleep, um, weight loss, um, clearer skin, things like that. And like I said, even though my original goal wasn't necessarily a lot of weight loss, um, but I, I just noticed a lot of positive benefits. My focus was better, um, things like that. So after going through that process and then slowly, probably in the middle of the year, easing some of those things back into my diet, not so much heavy on the sugar, but a few more carbs, a little bit of rice here and there, even if it was brown rice, things like that. Um, bread every now and then I would have a sandwich, things like that, that I had totally stuck clearly away from. <clears throat> Um, but I started looking at different things to kind of incorporate in my diet to keep that healthy flow going. So plant-based um, started with me looking into paleo and things like that. And I really just started looking into plant-based diet and its benefits. But my dilemma is twofold. And that is finding recipes that don't become repetitive and because I get, I bore easily. And then also finding things that can incorporate enough calories so that I don't lose a lot of weight on a plant-based diet. Cause that's not really my goal at this point. Right. So there I am. That's what brought it up. Yeah. I don't know if I've ever yeah. done a deep dive into mm -hmm. eating a lot of plant-based meals. Like I've uh -huh. found myself recently when we go out to restaurants, if there's something that has a meat alternative dish and I've pretty much had every other version of every other thing they've had on there. So like there's this chain near us called silver diner and they, okay. they have a really uh, good plant-based menu or a vegan options for their menu. And then everything else they have that I would normally eat like a burger or, you know, a steak or, you know, some sort of flatbread or something. I've had all this stuff before. So hmm. I'll try that option. So they had like uh, some plant-based um, meatballs or something like that. And it had a cauliflower mac and cheese. It wasn't really cheese. It was, I forget what they used to make it, but it was it was good. It was good. both items were good. The meatballs and the mac and cheese. Yeah, yeah, it was good. Okay. I was okay. So, I was so surprised because normally I'm a huge advocate of uh, only giving half. So when I say only giving half, I mean only taking out half of what I really wanted to eat anyway. So if I'm gonna do uh, like one day I made a shepherd's pie and for the shepherd's mm -hmm. pie, uh, some people will use ground beef. Some people will use lamb. Why I use the lamb or well, half lamb and half uh, beyond meat. Oh, yeah. OK. 
on purpose just because you wanted to just try. Right. So okay. I still wanted that flavor of the lamb and to still have it in there because normally when you substitute all of it out, yeah. it it just it feels like you've gone too far. It's just like when people tell me that turkey bacon, it tastes exactly the same as regular bacon. Come on. No, they it lie. doesn't. They, no, lies they tell. Yes. It no, doesn't. it does not. Yeah. So I try people to try to tell me that too. Yeah, I try to do half and half. Just like mashed cauliflower is not like mashed potatoes. But if you cut some cauliflower into your mashed potatoes, you're still getting the starch, but you're cutting out a lot of that weight that you're going to deal with for the next hour or two. Nice. I never thought about that, doing the half, kind of easing into it that way. A good idea. There's a burger place not too far from here. It's called Elevation Burger. And at Elevation Burger, they have a burger on their menu that's called the half the guilt burger. So hmm. it's one plant based patty and one regular beef patty. Mm. So now you talking? So I think I took that from them when I started making okay. a lot of dishes. Where I would think, okay, this is half the guilt, and you feel so much lighter, but you still get that fulfilling taste of I had beef or I had you know lamb or whatever it was chicken without feeling like oh you know. That was definitely a vegetarian or vegan or plant-based dish. Yes. Now, when you do that, Marcus, do you go to, because when it comes to marrying flavors, um, are you just really winging it or are you basing this off of your culinary knowledge and studies and saying lamb will blend better with beyond meat than turkey would or than pork would or something like that? Or do you just kind of just wing it and just do whatever you feel like that day? So honestly, it's a little bit of both. It's some trial and error. And then it's some things that have been tried and true when it comes to my culinary experience. So if mm -hmm. I know uh, a gamier meat like lamb will still give me full flavor, even if I take half of it away and substitute it with a plant based substitute, basically. Now, mm. beef, for on the other hand, may not have as strong a taste as the lamb or as distinct a taste which means I will know a lot more that I'm eating plant-based item because you have to add the beef flavor back in. And if I have to do that with a, some sort of beef base or people use teriyaki or balsamic or anything, I'm not trying to add this to add the sodium back. Cause that's something I have an issue with is the salt content. Oh yeah. Okay. So I'm trying to eliminate that and still have the strong flavors. It's all about the flavors without adding the sodium back because everything has so much sodium nowadays. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. It's hard to avoid. It's mm -hmm. really hard to avoid. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Okay. Have you tried um, anything at home plant-based wise cooking it yourself? I have. Now, when you say plant-based, do you mean like, a recipe or do you mean a plant-based like a plant-based thing like meat or sausage yeah so mean? so like um it can be e either one so just a meal that that was more leaning towards vegan or it could have been something where you used a beyond meat or an impossible product anything of that sort. Mm -hmm. okay yes i have um i have actually done um okay let's start with this i love rice mm -hmm. i love i love starches okay um so that was kind of one of the difficult things for me to eliminate when it came to keto. So when I first tried cauliflower rice, I did not like it at all. Mm. Um, I wanted to have some words with the people that said, it tastes just like rice. You know, no, no, no. There's a difference. I'm not saying it was terrible, but it did not taste like regular rice. Mm. So when I tried it the first time, I'm always a fan of, give me something a second shot because maybe it was a fluke. Maybe, you know, today just wasn't hitting on it. So mm -hmm. I tried it again, but I did a stir fry with it. I did uh, sweet peppers and I did the, 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 uh, what do you call it? The pepper tri trilogy mm -hmm. with the, the red, the green and the, and the yellow. I threw some orange peppers in there and things like that. And then I use a lot of mushrooms. I love mushrooms. So pretty much most vegetables, I put some asparagus in there. I took pretty much any vegetable you could think of. <laughs> and I disguised the cauliflower rice um, with yeah, it as gotcha. a stir fry. It was amazing. It was really, really, really good. And so the next time I did it, I tried different vegetables. Um, I threw a little ginger in there mm. um, and kind of put a little, you know, a little Asian spin on it. Um, and uh, that was good. 
And then now I kind of do that a lot. I also use, um, I'll do, uh, what do you call it? The, the spaghetti. Uh-huh. The, not, the, what am I trying to say? It's not spaghetti, but it's like the, um, like the Zucchini. spaghetti squash. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. Spaghetti squash. Gotcha. I do that. And um, I tried HelloFresh for a little while. Mm-hmm. And like you, I keep the recipe card. Mm-hmm. And there was something called firecracker meatballs, I believe. And they had a sauce that you made with it. Have you ever had that one from HelloFresh? I think it was, it was like an Asian sauce to it. Uh-huh. Yes. Yes, I have. You made the meatballs. It was Asian rice. Um, they send you all the ingredients for the sauce. And they were like chives and stuff. It was like an orange. Yeah, like Asian. So I made that sauce from HelloFresh and I mix that in with the stir fry. So all of my steamy stuff with the plant based that I've tried so far has been around stir fry type of dishes. Okay. Um, yeah. So it's been successful so far, but I want to venture a little bit away from that and try to get into something that tastes like meat, but that's not necessarily like tofu. Right. You know? Yeah. 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 I'm not eating that. Yeah. Tofu. Right. <laughs> Tofu is hit and miss. It's it's mostly miss, but it's 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 rough. You gotta know you gotta know somebody who knows what to do with it to get the best flavor out of it. Cause it has Yeah, nothing. and I don't know them. That's yeah. the person I've <laughs> not yet I have not met yet. Nah, because it's always a miss for me. And I gave it a few chances. But no, no thanks. I passed. I passed. I have found some beyond bratwurst that's good though. Okay. I've seen it in yeah. there, but I, I haven't tried it. I tried it. Um, it was pretty good. I tried it for the first time last week. Okay. And, um, I was kind of hesitant and I tried it first by itself. I used no condiments on it or whatever. Cause I wanted to just really taste it for what it was. Just huh. that. And it was excellent. So then I've, uh, now had it at least twice since then. Okay. And I've had it like with ketchup and mustard and relish as if, you know, like if it was a, a brought off the grill. Right. And then I've also done like peppers and onions and stuff like that and grilled and, and sauteed those and put it over there. In good. either case, it's been pretty good. So nice. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. That's not too bad. Okay. Uh, since we, we were talking about rice for a second, mm-hmm. let me go back to that. Okay. Rice is just about known in every culture, every culture around the world has some rice dish or rice going with something. What I've learned yeah. about, cauliflower rice is it does it works so much better with asian dishes like you were saying than it does with anything else and is that why i didn't like it when i tried it like with something regular yeah I, like pork chops or something yeah no it it just it doesn't seem okay. like it's made for that kind of thing i think it's because asian dishes are traditionally lighter than everybody else's so okay. so the fact that we try to take cauliflower rice to a Midwestern or a Southern type dish, they don't hold up as well. And that makes a lot of sense. Just like, uh, I don't, I don't know if you eat at Chipotle at all, but they just added cauliflower Love rice it. not too long ago. Love Chipotle, but I've never tried that. Is it the lime? It like, is, do they put the lime, the cilantro lime in, in lime in it? They say they do. Do I taste it? No. no. How is it? It. You like it? I, I had, a, I normally get a bowl. So I had a bowl with it. Just it. Mm-hmm. So just the regular rice. I mean, the cauliflower rice. And I didn't like it. What do you mean? You, you didn't put anything on it? Well, yeah, I had I had stuff on it. I'm just talking about I, you'll see where I'm getting to in a second here. So when I oh, okay. <laughs> when I went back the next time, I did my half the mm-hmm. guilt thing. So I got brown rice and cauliflower rice mixed together. Oh, um, I see. OK. Uh-huh. It was better, but it still wasn't as good as just getting brown rice. Mm. And it was mm. one of those things mm. where I really didn't feel like compromising on. I just wanted brown rice. I, I couldn't deal with the mix. It didn't hold up with the dish of the same. Gotcha. Okay. But, but if I get cauliflower rice and orange chicken, I'm good. Okay. That, you know, now that you say that, that makes a lot of sense. And I never thought about, see, that's why we need your brain every time when we're trying to try some new food. Mm. But yeah, that's, that makes a lot of sense. So I'm stopped. I won't force it. With that being said, you know, you can't force everything to taste great. Right, yeah. So I guess when I go to Chipotle, I'll probably just stick to what I know. Yeah. I might give it a shot. Well, no, I'm going to give it a shot. See, I'm, and then we'll compare notes. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, give it a try. Yeah. It, it's not yeah, try. terrible, but it just, it, I, it's it, just to not me, it. yeah, it's not worth the compromise for me. I'd rather just go ahead and get brown rice and call it a day. Yeah. And sometimes you got to do that because food is, I am a foodie. Like, so don't, 
there are certain things that um, I'll splurge on, I think are worth the experience, the money, the investment, whatever, travel and food uh-huh. are two of those things. Because, <laughs> you know, you live one time, my palate, you know, as you let us know, we lose taste buds as we get older. Uh-huh. So I'm trying to experience all the tastes. All of them. If I hate it, I hate it. But I'm trying to experience all the taste. Right. So we'll give it a shot. We'll see. Yeah. And we'll go from there. Yeah, just about everything mm-hmm. is up for uh, up for trying, except for chitlins. I don't know why Nate was trying to get me there. Do you eat chitlins? Listen, no. Stop cussing at me. No, <laughs> I don't. This is the thing that's so funny. That, and it's not like everybody's meant in that or so, so many people. But the amount of people that have come on your show and said that as far as like something that people normally eat that you don't, people don't normally eat that. <laughs> exactly. Absolutely not. I don't want anybody to try to talk me. If you have to talk me into the food, like you're talking me off a ledge, then that's something I will gladly pass on. Right. And I don't pass on too much food. Yeah. But no, I don't eat that. My dad, hold it for st- my dad is the only one in our immediate household that I grew up in that eats them. Gotcha. My brothers don't eat them. My mom doesn't eat them. Um, I don't even think, I'm trying to think if my mom ate them when she was younger. And get, I don't even think she ate them then. You know how some people <laughs> ate them when they were younger and then I think of it like this. When you know better, you do better. Yeah. But yeah. I don't think my mom ever did. But my dad, he eats everybody's chair. So, And you know how grandma does, you know, has always did it. Like you approaching the porch, the front porch at 220 and you just smell them. So, you yeah. Know. Yep, that's why yeah. I, I ate many a Thanksgiving dinner outside. Sir, no, you do not. Oh, is yeah. that why? Oh, yeah, that little the little back porch area back there. Yeah, you know, I throw the down jacket on real quick and go sit out there and eat my plate. Knock it off, because I have seen you do that, like not yep. regularly, but I've noticed it before. Yep, I thought you just was having a quiet day and didn't want to nah. talk to a lot of people. Nah, I was traumatized at one event. I don't, I don't remember which. Thanksgiving it was, but I was tall enough to see over the stove. So that kind of gives you an idea of where we were. Okay. But, okay. Yeah. You know, we live next door. So I come in, I can smell something's off, right? But we got too uh-huh. much food to kind of visually see what's off. So right. you popping lids open. And I think I turned to somebody who, who was ever to my left, maybe Earl or somebody. I was like, I see you got corn. Where'd you get the corn from? And he pointed towards the back of the stove. Uh Oh, it's happening. But, the problem is I popped the wrong lid and then chitlins assaulted my face. <gasps> oh, no. was this your first like close encounter with this, them? Yeah. Like right at nose level? This was one of the, again, right. My face oh. is right over the stove. Luckily oh. they were on the back burner, but I still, you know, when that steam burst first comes out of a pot, I, t- I, took, I can't. I took no, that. No. I took that like a Mike Tyson uppercut right to my nose. We and need to have a moment of silence because nobody should have to go through that. Yeah. Oh, that's awful. This was before you fixed the plate of anything. Oh yeah. So I, I tilted my head back almost like a HBCU drum major. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh wow. That's how. It, oh wow. Yeah. People are probably like, what happened? What happened? Nah. It, there's, on, okay. there's only a, a couple major instances that I just will stick with me when it comes to chitlins. That was one of them. And then the other one was uh, somebody other than my mom tried to make me a plate and for some <gasps> reason put chitlins on the plate and that plate was no longer mine. Of course. Yeah. So oh, they handed no, it to that... me and I was like, I'm not eating the chitlins. And they were like, just take the plate. I took that plate and sit it right on grandma and them table. And then I went back home. I'm not I went right that. back across the driveway. I know you did because that is trauma. Yeah. Oh, wow. They said just take the plate. You can't put chitlins near my plate. Yes. And the plate is going to be okay. You said you left it there and you went home. You went home. Yeah. Because I think mom was at the house. So I was like, until mom comes over here and properly fixes my plate, I'm not going back. I'm not playing and I'm not eating that. (laughs) Oh, wow. That's crazy. I'm sorry that happened to you. Yeah, it's okay. I didn't eat them. I mean, it's not like they actually were ingested or anything. Nate swears that they taste better than they smell. And I agree that they probably have to. I don't think there's any way they could taste worse than they smell. Right. There's, I mean, when, 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 when I heard him say that on the podcast and then I've heard other people say that as well, 
But the thing is, like you said, it's twofold. Number one, part A, they have to, because unless you're eating like a shoe sole or, <laughs> you know, other things that tend to, you know, carry an odor or, you know, make you think of dirt or <laughs> things that you shouldn't eat. Right. There's not too much. It has to taste better. That's what I'm saying. But number two, I don't, if, if the smell is bad enough to not make me fight to see what they taste like. I'm not going to, why would I do that to myself? I don't get it. I won't get it. And it's going to be okay without me eating chicken. We won't eat them. We have all me overcome. And you, yeah, we've overcome. Exactly. We, we just yeah. celebrated freedom not too long ago. We should have huh. freed ourselves of this food. Come on, Juneteenth. That's right. A we, long we have time moved ago. past it. And that's another thing, too, when it comes to like soul food. I've never been a big soul foodie person. Like, not that I don't like greens. I don't like mac and cheese. I don't like, it's not that. It's just that I could do without it and be just fine mm. on Thanksgiving or any other holiday when, you know, that's, you know, the big thing. Right. Um, you know, you, it's a heaviness that you feel when you eat it, you know, all that kind of stuff. It's just, I don't know. Maybe I just feel like, you know, it's not what it's all cracked up to be from a lot of perspectives. That's, but I only say that in certain circles because, you know, that's a big debate. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it was one of those things that you were born and raised on it. And uh, like Absolutely. Aunt, Aunt Mevlin going to research more of our family history, realizing that uh, grand, grandpa's mom was born in 1888. That's 100 years before I was born. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Just to so, think of it. So they were just that far removed from being slaves. So thinking of yeah. our parents being mm -hmm. that was their grandparents. So this is literally what they were raised on. This is everyday stuff for them. And I think Gen X and later had mm -hmm. so many more options to realize that, Hey, we don't have to eat this anymore. Yeah. It, Absolutely. it may be more nostalgia now than it is actually taste anymore because we don't you know what that's a point. It's nostalgia. Yeah. Yeah. Cause when, when do wow. you, when do you crave it? Holidays? Sometimes not even, you know what I mean? I think mentally, maybe I crave it, but then when it gets to that day, you think about, okay, I'm going to have this plate. And then the second, second round, I'm going to do this. I'm no longer a second round plate person. Like yeah. not with that food. Yeah. Me either. You know? Yeah. And I never thought I, I'm an eater. So I never thought that day would come. Mm -hmm. Like if you want to give me a second round with something lighter, like, I don't know. It could even be a different, like it could be some spaghetti, anything different than, Maybe yeah, mix it up. Right. But I'm good with one plate of the soul food. I'm I'm good. Yep. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That is it's nostalgic. That's interesting. I got a couple different directions from that, so I'm glad we kind of steered our way there, and it kind of ties. I'm gonna steer us back towards plant based in a second. Okay. But when we had a Thanksgiving down in Atlanta one year, I'm not sure if you were there or was it not. Aunt Minnie's or Uncle? Roy? It was at. Uh, I can't remember. It, it, I think it was Aunt Minnie's. I think it was Aunt Minnie's. Okay. We, we had a big meal, and mm -hmm. the next day, Aunt Valencia made lasagna. Yep, I was there. That was okay. at Aunt Minnie's. Okay. Yep, I was there. Mm -hmm. That year opened my eyes to what an actual holiday weekend should look like for me, and it's having enough food to last that day and maybe one other meal later like uh -huh. uh, one for Saturday or Sunday or something like that. Not the whole weekend because I used okay. to take so much food that I would have food for like four or five days from Thanksgiving. And there's no way I should have that much food to take with me as oh, one okay. individual. Yeah. But, wow. but having lasagna and then uh, peach cobbler too, but having lasagna the next day to break up the monotony of eating greens, ham, uh, turkey, all that stuff over and over again Sweet stuffing yeah. yeah macaroni yep. and cheese like it's a you got 10 items on your plate you can't even get a full serving of anything not at all so be, it was so much yeah being able to break that up with the lasagna i was like this is what it's supposed to be like here <laughs> wow who that's knew? who knew who so, knew you make a good point to, okay well let me ask you this you said you used to take enough stuff to last you know three four days how do you feel about leftovers can you eat leftovers are you one of them people that can eat leftovers say three days later no okay me 
I'm not either. So I was wondering about that. No. Okay. I reduced my right. cooking down. I don't know if you remember the episode. It was a long time ago. I think this was like episode nine or 10 or something. Don't quote me on the number, but I, it, it was in the, like the first 15. And mm-hmm. I talked about how to, how to handle leftovers. So things to do with leftovers, creative ways of turning them into a new dish. So you're not actually eating the same thing over and over. But I also talked about reducing them down in general, cooking less food. You don't have to cook a lot. Yeah. Okay. I kind of th- I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so normally that's what I do now is I've reduced the size of things. So I used to cook just like our family is huge. So you get used to cooking more than necessary just in mm-hmm. case. But, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. But with that thought, I was like, it's just two of us now. It's just me and Tamara. And that's it. And, and wow. now, so I, I cook like I'm actually going to eat it for one meal, which is tough because I don't know if you yeah. remember, mom used to eat a lot. Uh huh. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. she had uh, me. I'm hanging out with mom, and Brandon said this funny. He was like, I don't know of any mother's son who was closer at, at any point when it came to eating and different kinds of stuff. I was like, I guess. But I was like, I was a small nine, 10 year old eating Wendy's classic triples. What am I doing eating classic triples? Yeah, that that yeah, that's funny. <laughs> that is funny, but you get it honest though, because ain't Brenda used to do it. Yeah, I'm like, and she, get it in. And she wasn't yeah. that big, which is what made it so weird. Nope, is not I, at all. I was so small and eating like if, if there was a two for something sandwich deal, I wasn't uh-huh. thinking of me and somebody else are getting a sandwich. I'm thinking I'm getting two sandwiches. You would do the okay, so the two for it would you wouldn't even go into it like. Maybe I'll give this to somebody else, but if I don't, then if they don't want it, then I'll have it. You just went in, oh, okay, I'm going to get two sandwiches today. Nah. In my prime as a teenager, I would take down two Baconators and a large fry. Stop it. In one sitting? Oh, easy. And then be you ready to eat again later. You must have a super later. duper metabolism. Back then. And then be ready to eat again. That, that, oh, was, okay. yeah, that was back then. I was, I was prime time. My best friend, Will, was 6'8", 300 plus, and we ate about the same. Get out of here, really? Yeah, we 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 took we took down a Schwann's truck. I think one point his mom used to order like half the Schwann's truck and then have it at the mm-hmm. house. Yeah, we mm-hmm. go we go hard. They had all the new stuff, all the new snacks. Like they talked about on uh, what was it <laughs> next Friday? He's like, you got the new snacks. You know about all the. They had yeah. all the stuff at their house. Who knew that there were new snacks? Right. Okay, <laughs> wow, I never knew that. Cousin, I never knew that uh, you could put it away like that. Oh, like, yeah. wow. Yeah, that was back then. Now I know my limits. I think I, I I learned them maybe in my early 20s. We had a Thanksgiving down on 250 and uh-huh. uh, out at that church. And I went too hard. I went way too hard. And Uh-oh. next thing I know, because it was in that back area where they had the little sound, or the stage where they had the musicians at. Yep. I was yeah. laid yeah. across that stage, right? Laid across that stage. Um, I'm trying, <laughs> trying to think of how old Gabrielle was. Gabrielle was probably like five or six. So this was about 12 years ago. Okay. And uh-huh. yeah, I missed that. Thank you. Again. And Gabrielle laid my head on her lap. <laughs> A five or six year old laid my head on her lap and was rubbing my head. Like I was. She probably thought you were nigh unto death. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my oh, Gabby. But, oh, uh, she probably was like, oh, I got to save him. Yeah, she was she was helping me out because I was hurt. I literally could not stand up or sit up straight. Was it just food? Food like was it dinner food? Was it food this, and dessert? This was Thanksgiving. Was it, I, I went I went at least three plates deep plus dessert. You went hard. You went like Kevin style. Yeah, and that was it. That was it. It was all downhill for me right there. Yeah. Oh I, man. I couldn't do it anymore. I had to hang the belt up. Did you go to sleep? eventually I don't on know. that stage? I don't know. I think I was cooking at this point. So I probably had made a dish for this. I think I made meatloaf that year, but I went hard. So I didn't have to be on the cleanup crew. That was, that was the best thing about going to culinary school. Cause in our family mm-hmm. is so many people and stuff. We actually have to have jobs for Thanksgiving, especially when you're younger. If you ain't yeah, cooking, yeah. you own cleanup crew or you got to bring you something or right. set something up. But when you start cooking though, now I didn't supply the dish. I'm not as obligated to help with the back end stuff, the cleaning up. So that's the trick to getting out of it. Right. So I was free to just lay around and sulk mm-hmm. in, in my itis after this was <laughs> over. Wow. 
that was your turning point that year right there? Yes. And speaking of itis, it's almost like I made that transition myself. Uh, mm-hmm. But have you ever watched the show The Boondocks? I have, yes. Uh, have yes. you seen the episode about the itis? Yes, I have, yes. Okay. <laughs> so at the beginning of the itis, and I just rewatched it the other day, Huey asks Granddad, did you get the broccoli that I gave you and cook it? Because they were making a soul food dinner for Sunday. Uh huh. Because, you know, we rarely, our kind rarely have vegetables, like vegetables that haven't been seasoned with pork or a bunch of salt or cooked all the nutrients out of. Right, right, right. And that's exactly, literally put a piece of salt pork in it. Like that's, literally. <laughs> that's exactly what he did. Took the broccoli, <laughs> cooked it down with, with the pork and the fat back and all this. Stuff. I was like, it, what, you just eliminated everything. Everything, everything nutritious, everything. So I will ask you, do you think that plays into the stigma of African-Americans trying to eat vegetarian or vegan meals or plant based because they think of it as rabbit food and not real food? Um, Yes, I do. I definitely do. Um, Because people that I've mentioned to uh, people that I mentioned it to that I wanted to kind of try to make that transition at some point. Um, I get a lot of laughs. I get a lot of blank stares, you know, things like that. But then again, I get that too with the way I eat my veggies. So, and that's um, outside of what we're kind of conditioned to growing up as well. Is I don't cook the nutrients out of my vegetables. I like everything super duper al dente. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, I like my steak, nothing higher than medium. Um, you know, that kind of thing. Because as I said earlier, when you know better... <laughs> You do better. I grew up. Remember we put the uh, green beans in the slow cooker oh my God. and let them cook all day long. <laughs> so it's like green mush. It was good though. We were Well, when I was a kid, it seemed like it was amazing until I tasted otherwise. <laughs> and then it'd be even worse when they came out of a can. Yeah. Oh my word. Yeah. T- totally awful. Totally awful. So yeah, like I think people do this thing. Rabbit food, like that's not real food. Like you can't survive on that. You know, whatever, but it's interesting, but I think I can do it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there there are so many options nowadays versus like 20 years ago. But yeah, that, yeah, that whole stigma has to go. I mean, you don't have to like say I'm I'm just eating lettuce every day. There are so many options. It, we made so uh, options. we made a black bean hummus at my job and it was fantastic. It still gave me the feeling of eating like. Uh, not black bean, black eyed peas, black eyed pea hummus is what I meant to say. Sorry. And it was so oh, that good. Sounds interesting. It still gave me that Southern feel without feeling mm-hmm. like it had a bunch of ham and stuff, you know, tossed in it. Mm-hmm. So it, it tasted light, but it gave you the taste of the black eyed peas. Right. So it, it's again, giving me that nostalgia without yeah. throwing all the sodium and the pork and stuff in there. And this is me not trying to be, you know, harping on people like I don't eat pork. I had bacon the other night for dinner at like three o'clock in the morning. So d- don't don't think I'm trying to be high and mighty here. <laughs> yeah, no judgment. Right. <laughs> no but, judgment. Yeah. But I'm like, I tried different stuff. I tried mm-hmm. to expand like soon. I want to make sure I, I bought some black beans a while ago and I want to try to make my own black bean burger because I like them when they're right. But when they're wrong, okay. I mean, it, it just feels like where where was the beef at? Like Wendy's commercial. Where's the beef? Where is it? Oh man, he threw it back with that one. Wow. Yeah, that's interesting. There's so many options if you just open your mind. I'll have to like remember to tap you for some ideas and recipes because flavor marrying is what I would like to have your expertise okay. on. Like, if I'm doing this or trying this, what flavors should I mix with it? You know, whether it be seasonings or just pairing this food with this food. Now let me ask you this, and this is because, like I told you earlier. When you, um, at least from my journey slowly into it, it's not very, very uh, calorie heavy. And I don't want to lose a whole, you know, group more weight. Mm-hmm. So when it comes to adding healthy fats in and things like that, what do you know about avocados? Have you done a lot of cooking with, other than weight, other than making guacamole? Uh, Have you done any? I haven't guacamole? done a lot of cooking with them they're normally something you just add fresh to different things they give they give a good fresh uh element to it to me avocados remind me of potato for some reason with their taste i don't know why that is but they remind me of the potato taste but with a fattier texture so i just like adding them fresh 
to spicier dishes or to something that needs a cooling factor to it. Instead of adding a lot of sour cream or just going full-fledged guacamole, I think they add mm-hmm. a nice light bit because they they don't give you a, a ton of flavor unless you season them well. But I thought that too, and maybe I'll try it like you said, like with because I've had guacamole mm-hmm. and I'm I like it. I'm not like oh I love guacamole, but I, I like it. Right. You know. But um, I tried avocado toast recently, mm-hmm. and it. And again, I'm a I'm a texture kind of person. I mean, I I try a lot of things, but there was something about the texture and the lack of whatever robust flavor I thought I was going to get from the avocado. Mm-hmm. It was strange to me, and so that's no. It doesn't come. It doesn't pack a big punch. Then so that wasn't just me and my taste buds. Oh uh, no, it it can't. Well, it can be the star, but it's tough. It's like a okay. beat Bobby. I don't know if you ever seen beat Bobby Flay, but they try to make something the star of a dish. Yeah, I've seen it maybe once or twice. Avocados you know? is not really that thing. Avocado, okay. making avocado the star of a dish is like making ice the star of a drink. Oh, you said a lot when you said that. Yeah. I guess that puts it in perspective. Yeah, it's it's a complimentary okay. item. And like I said, I, I normally put it with something of spice or uh, something that okay. it can offset and change just the temperature or the texture. Because I'll put it on like a, a pressed turkey sandwich or something, too. Okay. Now, I'm going I'm to go out there on a limb when you said that. Okay. So you said you it could cut spice a little bit. Mm-hmm. So it may sound wacky, but if you're having hot wings, have you ever tried to do some kind of sauce? Like, okay, well, you would normally use like a blue cheese or a ranch. I'm a blue cheese girl. Mm-hmm. But um, to, to take the bite off of that hot wing, um, have you ever tried anything with avocado to make a sauce or something that has avocado? No, but I'm sure it's very doable because if you get a okay. good, it doesn't have to be overly ripe, but at least enough to where you can puree it. And mm-hmm. you could almost okay. you could almost run it with some uh some item that has more of a viscosity to it to thin it out and then right. make it into like an avocado, not necessarily an avocado mayo, because that's headed in the wrong direction, but some kind of kind of avocado crema or something. Like if you wanted okay. to do a chipotle wing, which is a little hotter, the avocado mm-hmm. crema might pair well with that because it's similar Mexican Latin flavors. Okay. And avocado crema you Compass that like is it easy to do yeah you just, just like pu- a few ingredients yeah you can puree the avocado if you have like half and half or some milk or something just go light just, just as simple as that yeah just a little okay. bit at a time and then you can kind of add some seasonings to it as you like if you want it to be you know more pungent with the flavor or if you're just using it as a cooling factor and mm-hmm. you know you'll have the nice you know a, a slightly green tint to it you can use it that way okay you can almost season it like a ranch too actually Aha. Uh-huh. So, you know, people do avocado mm-hmm. ranch all the time. I've heard of it. I never tried it. Mm-hmm. And I've only recently heard of it, to be honest with you. Again, I would start right. with, uh, this is my thinking from where we've gone. I would start with some uh, half the guilt kind of ideas, air quote there. Okay. Uh, okay. Take you some ranch or your favorite ranch. You can take a fat free ranch if you want to. It's going to be a little bit higher in sodium, though. But if you want to add the fat back by using the avocado, yeah. That would help you increase the fat, the healthier fat with the avocado and then still getting the flavor of the ranch. And then if you slowly want to start making your own ranch and, you know, kind of controlling your own sodium and content and stuff there, you could slowly okay. transition that way. That way you're not making the big leap from ranch and blue cheese on across the way to, you know, avocado. I love that idea. OK, thank you. No problem. It's what I'm here for. I'm going to try it. <laughs> I would try that. Yes. Okay. All right. So, so we uh kind of talked about some plant based stuff. Mm-hmm. I want to get into some generalizations. What's the last new food that you tried? Um, and I should have been ready for this question. Um, albeit boring, probably the avocado toast. <laughs> 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 avocado toast. Um, I tried recently, and um, yeah, I think that's the. And that's only because I try so many things. I'm somebody mentions it, I want to try it. You know, mm-hmm. so, yeah. So probably avocado toast, yeah, like something that I'd heard of for years and just never tried. Right. Said, I'm gonna try this. I don't know if anybody okay. anybody caught this, but Tammy is a seasoned vet in the restaurant industry as well. So mm-hmm. <laughs> when she mentions yeah. this stuff, it, it hits home because we get tired of dishes. I mean, we see the same thing over and over. You just get tired of eating it. Exactly. Yes, exactly. 
you want to mix it up. It never, uh, I shouldn't say it doesn't sit right with me because to each his own, but I would say it never ceases to amaze me how many people will leave uh, my particular brand, you know, because they work at my restaurant and then they'll come back for dinner on their day off. And I'm thinking, oh huh, my God. really? You can do that? I can never do that. Like even, you know, though I'm there, you know, as much as I am, whenever I eat there, it's usually off menu. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just, hey, I, I want this protein, this veggie, this, you know, whatever. Mix me something up. Right, right. But man, yeah, you got to, you got to, Gotta have some variety. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we've, we've I, seen it all. I used to even struggle back in the day when I worked at fast food restaurants and mm-hmm. I wouldn't want to eat it anymore. Like I would have it for lunch just because I simply couldn't go anywhere. And then once I leave, I'd be like, all right, where am I going to eat for tonight? I'm not eating that same thing again or trying to take it home with me. Right. Even if you really like it, right? Like if you, what did you, what if it was your favorite, bur- like what's your favorite? You Have you worked more than one fast food place? Um... No, no. What was I think, your favorite? I think it was just Taco Bell that I only worked there. Okay. What what was your favorite thing from Taco Bell? If you had to eat it. <laughs> Back then, a Taco Bell was a steak quesadilla. Okay. So even a steak quesadilla, that was your jam. You wouldn't say, like, say maybe once every couple of weeks, take home a steak quesadilla? No, nah, unless it was, uh, unless I was very short on money, uh-huh. I that's normally when I pile it in at work, when I know I can't afford to go eat anywhere else or go buy anything uh-huh. else. Yeah. But otherwise, no. Like you said, yeah. I, would, I would make up stuff. I was always nope. a big advocate of making up stuff that had nothing to do with what was on the menu. Unfortunately, at Taco Bell, you have the same ingredients for everything on the menu. So, I think that's by design. That's how they're saving <laughs> money. That's why they make, they make a killing. Every time I see a new Taco Bell commercial and they go the new, I'm like, you're lying. <laughs> <laughs> you're not fooling anybody. You just folded it with a different thing on the outside and you put some lettuce on this one and the other one comes with sour cream, but this one doesn't. <laughs> yeah. Like every 10 years, oh, they get wow. a new sauce. They get more new Mountain Dews than they do new items on their menu. Man, they do have a lot of Mountain Dews. I didn't even know there was such a thing. Right. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, you my people. It, I think we're similar when it comes to that kind of you know, mix it up. And I don't care if I really, really like it. I just can't keep doing it because I see it day in and day out. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. Um, that's what's something you don't eat that everybody else does? And we know it ain't chitlins. Yeah, it's definitely not that. Um, uh, two things, actually. Um, number one is candy. Mm. Um. Now, chocolate is a different thing. Like, when it comes to candy, the only, I like things like a candy bar, mm-hmm. okay? But when it comes to can- Starburst, Jolly Ranchers, you know, things in that arena, like like candy, 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 mm-hmm. nah, that's not my jam at all. Like, I could go from here until eternity and never have a piece of, like, sugar candy. Like, no, that's just not my thing. Um, really never had been. Even when I was little, I was more into, like, like Reese's peanut butter cups or stuff like that, but I don't really count that. Do you count that as candy, per se? Peanut butter cups? Yeah. I, I'll, I'll lean that more towards the chocolate candy bars conversation. Yeah. Now, that's my jam. Like, I like that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But other than that, I can do it out. Like, butterscotch and, you know, I don't know, any kind of candy candy like that. Yeah, we're ex- like, we're exactly the same there. I don't know. I'm not, I say, I don't know. I do know. You heard the, uh, the chocolate episode that I did, um, kind of ranking the candy bars and stuff. Oh yeah. That was, yeah. that was because I don't eat candy. I, I eat candy bars. I barely yeah. eat those anymore, really. But if I do, it's, it's a Reese's cup and I usually have to hunt for one, like the one with the pretzels in it. And I went and got that right after the episode. I think I remember I te- I think I sent you a yes. text that I had found it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I, but like yep. Oh, I love it. I love it. Oh, yeah. Because I love salty and sweet together. Mm-hmm. I like that. Like, even when I get, like, um, like I do, like, like Chex Mix, I like that salty and sweet mix. That's my favorite. Gotcha. Like anything where it blends, fa- but balances flavors like that. I like that. Okay. But candy is one. And the second thing <clears throat> is cake. Unless it is carrot cake or German chocolate. If it's not one of those two, I can do without it. Okay. I don't like chocolate cake per se. I don't like like vanilla cake. I, I can do without pound cake from here. And I'm I like to bake, okay. but I can do without it. Like unless it's one of those two that I made. 
I'm with you on the carrot, but why German chocolate? I think it was because, um, well, number one, I love coconut. Mm. So it's the icing for me. Um, But when I was younger, my mom used to make German chocolate cake for like our birthdays and stuff like that because it seems like everybody in my family and our household liked German chocolate. So I remember um, always helping her make it and stuff like that. And I would love to just eat the icing like off the, the um, like off the spatula and things like that. Um, and like I said, I love all things coconut, but I can kind of like eat the cake part that's close to the icing. And then if there's a whole bunch of just the cake part left, I can leave that alone too. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so it's really just the coconut and the chocolate aspect of it. Gotcha. I don't know if you remember my story about the uh, the German chocolate cake. I was talking to Phil on the chocolate cake episode. So German, I remember the episode, but t- refresh my memory. German chocolate cake. When I used to see Grandma make it, and she, you know, she would leave cakes out on the counter and stuff. So I'd go over there and see it, and I could have sworn she had frosted the cake with Vaseline. I did not know. Oh wait, what? I don't remember that. <laughs> what I, I, I did not know what the frosting on German chocolate cake was. To me, it looked like Vaseline. <gasps> oh my! <laughs> so I never went near it because I was like, "This doesn't look right." Why do you? Why was Vaseline? But it's lumpy, like because of the. I the I didn't get I didn't stuff. get close enough to realize that. Oh, you just saw a glaze and said, "Oh, it's Vaseline." <laughs> Yeah, that's what I that's what it looked like to me. I was like, why is why does it, the frosting look like that? It, it didn't look like any uh, other frosting on any other cake that she made. Well, no, because it stands alone. It's right. different. And I didn't have coconut yeah. for years because I didn't know what it tasted like. Because mom used to eat those York peppermint patties all the time. Uh-huh. And I thought that coconut tasted like those because I'd had those. So when I saw the inside, I thought coconut and peppermint had to be similar because they looked similar when I saw them. So mom would be eating oh, alm- okay. almond joys and stuff. And I thought it was the same as the peppermint patty, but I hadn't had the almond joy yet. Oh, that's messed up because they taste totally. I don't think that stuff in your peppermint patty has anything to do with coconut. No, it doesn't. Like it's to- I don't like them. Number one. Yeah. Um, and then number two, it's a totally different, totally different taste than like an almond. So you stayed away from all that. Cause you thought it was all like that. I don't blame you for doing it though, because the New York peppermint patties aren't exactly. Yeah, I don't have. I don't an, know. They're not exactly the jam. I didn't have an almond joy until I was like in my mid twenties. It took that long, though. Oh yeah. Did you like it? Was it worth the wait? No. No. <laughs> no. It wasn't terrible. Wait, do you do you like almonds? Not necessarily. On um, on my scale of favorite nuts, that that's uh-huh. it's really low, and it's sad because it's like one of those that's healthier, I guess. I'm just not a fan. Yeah. What's your favorite nut? Pecans. Come on. Oh, okay. I, yeah, okay. Ah. I guess, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All day, every day. All day. <laughs> I used to love pecans. I still do. But now what it's taken over is my top two are pistachios and cashews. Okay. But I love pecans, but pistachios, oh, man, anything with pistachio. I, 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 I like it. both of those. Yeah? Okay. All right. Yeah. Back, back in business. But being in Georgia for that long and peaches and pecans were like home. Oh, yeah. That's true. That's true. Do you cook with those two things a lot? Uh, When I can. I'm not saying together, but yeah. Okay. Yeah, when I can. What's the most exotic thing you've made? Like, I, maybe exotic isn't the word I should use. But what's the favorite thing that you've made that you're like really proud of that has one or both of those ingredients in it? Mm-hmm. I love when you experiment with stuff because it's always so unique. Hmm. Huh can't think peaches I, I normally make cobbler on one end for dessert or i'll make barbecue sauce out of the peaches oh that sounds good so i love peach barbecue anything peach and pork goes together so well and okay yeah i do know that yeah okay we used to actually wow. put it when i worked in north carolina we had a uh-huh. peach barbecue sauce that we put on duck that was fantastic but we pu- we pureed things. roasted peaches and added peach nectar to our house barbecue sauce. That sounds so good. Oh yeah, it was good. Oh wow, what an adventure to be able to just come up with like I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do that. Yeah, that's 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 cool. I think that's cool. what. W- okay, speaking of which, and I I'm gonna ask you this because I have you right here. Mm-hmm. What was that the 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 
the desserts you made for your wedding. Mm-hmm. What? There was two different kinds, right? Yep. What was the one that was the lighter color? Uh, sweet potato pound cake. That's what it was. Oh, my word. Mm. I think I got, I barely got one at the end, I believe, from what I remember. I think I might have stole my daddy. <laughs> I think maybe either my dad had, like, I, that's like, I think one of the uncles or something gave one of my dads, and my dad had two. And I took one. That's the only way I could get one because they, they had crushed them. But that was the best thing. It was so good I had to start eating it slow. Yeah. Because I was getting sad that it was going to be over. The rush happened when somebody, I guess, asked one of our friends or something. They were like, oh, yeah, these desserts are pretty good. Where'd they get them from? And they was like, oh, Marcus made them. They was like, oh, Marcus made these? And then it just kind of spread around. And then Mm. they, they, next thing you know, they disappeared. So luckily, I don't know how many people know this, but the night before for rehearsal, Mm. uh, I had a bag underneath our table. I hid, I hid the bag there during rehearsal. So I had a bag with about 20 of each underneath the oh, table, right where, right where me and Tamara sat. So when we sat down, I kicked the bag and reminded myself, I was like, oh yeah, I got backups just in case I get distracted or anybody else on the wedding party. I was like, I got you. What a good idea. So yeah. And my behind skipped the rehearsal dinner like a weirdo. <laughs> I won't do it again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. So, so whenever people walked up that and they were like, good. oh, yeah, the, you made the desserts. I was like, yeah. And they were like, man, I didn't get one. I would be like, hold on one second. And then go back like oh. it was a drug deal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I got a little something for you. <laughs> right. Wow. That's cool. Yeah. That was amazing. That was amazing. Yeah. You ever take those at a family event, please stash me something because you know they'll go quickly. Oh, okay. But I'll look yeah. out for you. Thank you. <laughs> No problem. Appreciate got, it. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. Anything else food wise you want to discuss? You got for the people anything? Um, no, I think I think that we've covered a lot of great stuff, I think. Mm-hmm. I'm just so honored to have been part of the show. Oh yeah, anytime. But, yeah. No, nope, that's all I got. All right, cool. That's all I got. Well, thank you for coming on. Always a great conversation, food wise and otherwise. Yes. Might have to bring yes. you back on. This one just kind of flowed through. We're almost at an hour here. Oh my, uh, wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we talked. Yeah. We talked. Yeah. So All pe- right. people will get an earful out of this one. Good, good, but good. To everybody it's else. Thank you for listening. Uh, it's been a great episode. Be back next week. Have no idea what the topic is. I'm trying to get more ahead of these, uh, but you know, running a little bit behind. Check out the website, yourfoodlooksfunny.com. Like I said at the beginning, call or text the show. Do you have any intriguing thoughts about going plant-based after being a meditarian, carnivore? Call 419-77-PICKY or 419-777-4259. Thank you guys for listening. See you next week. <laughs>